and we are live right now. So, yeah. okay, like I said the other day, mistakes will always happen on this thing. It's so much fun. <laughs> sure. um, so, so because of working in different time zones and I've been playing with West Coast time people so much, when I said one o'clock, I was thinking one o'clock central time. <laughs> oh, that's funny. We we were wondering that. We were like, oh, I wonder if it, if if we we messed up and admit central. So, it's all you good. might have, yes, you messed up. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> we'll Level, take the blame. It's all on you. That was a that was a disconnect. What? Yeah. Well, it happens. And it, the it funny was- part. The funny part about all of that is I do promo videos that you know we've promoted this thing three times now, but in all transparency, I um, I also uh, set them up to where they're they're pre-done. Okay. So so they stream, they show that they're streaming live, but really they're recorded. Right. So I schedule them, and sometimes I miss what the schedule is. <laughs> no worries. Oh, you know, good. So, so it went out at 11 o'clock, apparently, Central Time, and saying, hey, we're going to be on in an hour, and we're a few minutes late. So uh, we're here. Yeah. Oh, well, here we are. So <laughs> hey, folks, if anybody's watching at the moment, you know, hey, um, Brian Gibbs here. And I've got two special guests. Count them, two, one, two. Talking about SEO today. So rather than go into a long drawn out intro, since we're already cutting into time, why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves and tell us what you're doing why you're here. Mm -hmm. Taylor, I'll let you go. Start us off. Yeah, I'm Taylor. I obviously work at The Hoth with Andrew, um, account manager. So really just help people, you know, analyze people's sites, live in Ahrefs and, and SEMrush and Moz, take a look in the back end, see what's going on, help them define opportunities and, and see what their goals are and then just suggest, make suggestions. Um, I mean, really just SEO strategies, help them implement those strategies, monitor the progress over time. And I just, I love seeing people's uh, strategies succeed too. So that's essentially what I do. Essentially. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did I say that a lot? No, oh, yeah, no, it's perfect. just... It was funny because you basically listed <laughs> off like 80 different things. You're like, essentially, you know, I don't, I really didn't really do anything. Yeah. I, um, I, I help, I help people buy the right products. That's what I do. Yeah. Hey, really exactly. quick, Drew, before you do your intro, Taylor, adjust your camera just a little bit. Was that? Oh, up. Or? There you go. Now you're not cut off in the middle of your forehead. Okay. This way. Oh, it's been backwards. This is confusing. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, tell me, who are you? Yeah, I am uh, Andrew Hardgrove. I'm an account executive with the Hoth, and I've been there for about uh, almost five years now. Um, basically, the same role as Taylor. I won't go over everything that she had said again. Um, <laughs> but basically, our jobs are, are to look at websites, uh, make recommendations, help agencies uh, with their clients, and, mm-hmm. and really just, you know, lay the landscape um, you know for, for their for their potential clients that are coming on coming on board so um, it's really exciting because uh, because we work with a lot of agencies we get to see a lot of different niches a lot of different industries um, so that's probably the the number one thing I, I love about my job is that it is always uh, changing and evolving even though you know it's not like my previous job where it was different locations um, it's it's different businesses and you still get that sense of actually helping someone reach their goals. Uh, which is a really big thing um, that can be really gratifying. I think, you know, SEO can kind of be seen as a boring niche, uh, but if you can, you know, help others and make it fun, that can really set yourself apart um, from the competition. So I I love it. For sure. No, absolutely. Um, And there's so much confusion about what SEO is and what search is that maybe that's what makes it boring because people just don't, really fully grasp it. That's why I wanted you guys to come on today and um, and explain kind of what the whole thing of SEO is, what search is. We'll say SEO, but for those who don't understand what SEO is, SEO is search engine optimization, this whole big voodoo thing that <laughs> nobody, honestly, I, I talk, and I know you guys do too, I talk to people all the time, they're like, well, I need to do SEO to my site. How do I get my ads up? Yeah. It's like, well, your ads aren't SEO. So why don't we just bounce into this thing really quickly um, and go over some basic stuff. What is 
SEO? What is search engine optimization? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you, you know, in the sense it's search engine optimization SEO, but um, there's really two parts. You have your on-page SEO and you have your off-page SEO. Um, and a lot of people get that confused as well. You know, what what is on-page SEO? Well, it's a combination of content marketing, so blog content, um, you know, making sure that the title tags, meta description, all the back end is properly optimized for Google to crawl and index because they read a, a website differently than you and I. They, they're not, you know, looking at just text. Um, they're looking at code. Um, yeah, and then we're not even looking at the pictures. So when, yeah. you talk about alt, when you talk about alt text, you know, that's what the search engines are actually reading. It's not reading yeah. you know, a picture of us. Right, right, exactly. So that's why, you know, even labeling your images is, is very, very important. Um, and then, you know, you have your off page SEO, which is just the link building, um, mm -hmm. making sure that, you know, you're identifying the correct keywords that are corresponding to not only uh, the site, but the landing pages. Where are you pointing those links to? A lot of people get confused that it's just, you know, backlink building is just building links to the home page. Well, yeah. you know, today it's all about making sure you have that piece of optimized content and that landing page and that you're linking to it, you're promoting it. Um, you know, a backlink is like a, a like on Facebook, you know, the more, the more likes you are theoretically, the more popular you are. So the more links you have theoretically, Google sees you as a, as a viable website. So. Gotcha. So let's, let's go over a little history on the whole SEO thing, because, you know, just like websites, SEO has been around and it's gone through so many weird evolutions. Um, Let's chat about keyword stuffing, why that doesn't work and how that how that'll screw you. Yeah, Taylor, you want to go ahead and take that? Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's a super outdated thing that sometimes people still think is is relevant today and they think that's going to get the job done if, you know, it's it's kind of just like a very removed way of thinking about things like, okay, if I put this keyword a million times on this page, then I'm obviously going to rank number 1. It used to work. It did used to work, but yeah. now it's it's super spammy. Google is obviously getting smarter every single day. They release algorithms like weekly, whether it's you know a big core algorithm update. They're always tweaking to get smarter and get people the best results. Absolutely. So doing that, I mean, you're just trying to essentially dupe Google again behind that thinking. If I use this word a million times on this page, I'm gonna I'm gonna rank for it. You know, Google doesn't fall for that. Now it's it's about using it the appropriate amount of times, but also having the content on that page that matches the intent, the user intent, what people are searching for. Um, and go again, Google can just tell, um, you know, yeah. it can match people with the right content. Yeah, if it's not natural, don't do it. You know, I mean, that's kind of a good rule of thumb when it comes to SEO. If, if you wouldn't naturally, you know, do it on your website, then, you know, if you're trying to write an article and you're three sentences in or three paragraphs in and you're like, oh, I've used this keyword 10 times, just stop. <laughs> it's, yes. it's not going to do yourself any good. So. That's a, that's enough times. Yeah. 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 I, I remember, I remember the days of, um, and I know this is going to date me cause it's stuff we were doing before you guys were alive. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, say a white, a white page mm -hmm. and then have all your words at the bottom of the page in white font. Oh yeah. 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 Like, and make them invisible basically. <laughs> To make them mm -hmm. invisible so you'd have a you'd have a footer that was like that long right but you couldn't see it you know nobody nobody really understood what that footer was except for people who were trying to work the system but back then the system was built that way so mm -hmm. taylor what you're saying then is the 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 search engines have actually gotten smarter and actually can can figure these problems out or these yep. these attempts to trick them to figure exactly. it out yeah, uh, it, don't, don't try to dupe them. It won't work. You, you'll possibly could get penalized for it. There's so many other ways to go about it than than that. It's just like Andrew said, SEO is always evolving. It's just about staying staying ahead of it and, and keeping up to date um, with everything. But yeah, it's all about being natural now. It's still yeah. the wild, wild west, but not so much as it used to be. You know, there's <laughs> yeah. still plenty of opportunity with SEO and making money online and all of that, but you know, it's, it's, it is, it is getting, there's more laws in place now. <laughs> so what you're, so what you're saying, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So people come across though, too, as we just kind of lead into things, um, people come across articles and whatnot online saying that search engine optimization is dead because, you know, all of these old tricks don't work anymore. How true or not true is that? 
I would say it's untrue 110%. Um, yeah. It's not dead. It's evolved um, okay. for the good, for the better. Um, because now everyone always says, well, I, I can't keep up with Google's algorithms. I don't, you know, it's too confusing. Realistically, it's not. They, they've, let out, they've laid out the, the game plan for us, right? They've said, we want to see, you know, niche specific backlinks going to your website. So, you know, if you're in the automotive industry, don't have a restaurant, you know, website linking to you. Um, you know, they want to see that your, your links are in content, right? So no, uh, permanent homepage sidebar links anymore. Um, you know, basically being on a real website within the content, you're, you're, you're good. Um, also they want, they want to see content on your website. So if you have a one page website, it's probably not going to rank. Also, if you just have a blog site, you're going to rank for some keywords, but you got to support those, that content with link building. So SEO has evolved. It's it's more um, it's more about content and links than it's ever been versus just link building or keyword stuffing. Uh, but I think it's as, it's almost as easy as it was in the past. You just kind of have to adapt. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I would say. I mean, it's certainly not dead. I feel if anyone says that they've either had a terrible experience in the past, whether it was working with bad company and didn't see those results or tried it on their own and didn't see any results, but it's, you know, it's just about finding the right part, partner for your SEO and, and keeping up with what the algorithm is now and how to satisfy that and have a customized solution to your website. It's not just SEO, you know, you need this, this, and this, it's, you, you need a custom solution. Not every website is exactly the same, so. Right, yeah. right. So, um, Andrew, you brought, up, you brought up landing pages before. Mm -hmm. Um, so is it not good to, to send links to your homepage anymore or, um, or is that still acceptable? And then when you talk about landing pages, are you talking about regular content pages within the site or are you talking about a specific landing page aside from a content page? That's a great question. Um, so to, to answer the first part of that backlinks to the homepage, absolutely. You should definitely still get links back to your homepage. Um, the biggest thing with that, though, is your, your homepage should be optimized for your brand, right? So um, if it's the Hoth, you know, we need to point links for the Hoth to the homepage, right? We don't need to um, try to, to rank your homepage for DUI attorney um, Ontario, right? You, you right. really, your homepage is all about your brand, your authority, get the domain authority up. If you're trying to rank for something like DUI attorney Ontario, make sure you have Andrew's law firm forward slash uh, DUI attorney, right? And then all your DUI attorney content would live on that landing page. And then you could also supplement that landing page with like a blog. And that blog might be, um, you know, 10 things to consider when, when hiring an attorney. And then it would link back to, you know, your attorney page. So it's, it's really about having those pages optimized for the keywords you're trying to rank for uh, while also still maintaining, you know, the, the homepage and the brand and the overall site authority. So there's <laughs> multiple factors, but, but they, they're all very important. I wouldn't say there's, you know, one thing that you should do more than the other. Um, you need to constantly be paying attention to, to, to all your pages really. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, people, I mean, obviously you're going to point links to your homepage and you're naturally going to acquire links to your homepage as well. But people try to optimize their homepage for like everything <laughs> and you're just shooting yourself in the foot because it's going to be really hard for Google to figure out what to rank you for appropriately if you're just pointing everything towards your homepage and ranking yeah. your homepage for all that. So one of my one of my favorite industry uh, uh, terms is what was that that keyword cannibalization? Yeah, <laughs> one that nobody can say. Yeah. <laughs> so that's funny. So um, so don't don't run all your keywords to your homepage, you know, um, and and try and rank some of your content pages. Um. What, I kind of know the idea, I know the percentage. I mean, obviously the questions I'm asking you are for general knowledge. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, what's the percentage of searches that actually lead people to the homepage versus a content page? I mean, well, that might not be a fair to ask percentages, but I think you understand what I mean by that. 
I would say it's 80, 20, and it just depends on the niche too. You know, some you'll see, um, like if you search a keyword, you'll see all 10 results are landing pages or blogs. Um, others you'll see a mixture of an, an exact match domain or, you know, still like a blog or a landing page. So I would say right now it's still probably about 80, 20, where it's 80% landing pages and blogs, 20%, um, either an exact match domain or somebody's just spammed the crap out of their homepage, uh, for their <laughs> brand name. Um, uh, because even, even like your, your, your brand, um, typically if it is a homepage, it's ranking, it's, it's an exact match domain. It's not so much like, you know, just a random uh, business name. Like if it was Andrew's plumbing, you know, you're not going to rank for probably the keyword, um, you know, hot water repair. You know what I mean? You might, right. you might rank for plumbing, you know, near me, Andrew's plumbing, cause it's got that keyword in it, but you know, mm -hmm. hot water or, or anything, not with that keyword without it. I mean, you, you're just not going to rank. So makes sense. Yep. Um, go ahead. Oh, no, I say I, I don't know the exact like percentage per se. I think it, a lot of it depends on the, the search intent of that. Mm -hmm. keyword. Um, okay. But what what we do in, in what strategies we implement a lot of times is just creating content. And the keyword research is the first step that you have to do in any for any campaign um, and just, you know, match people to the content that they're looking for. Obviously, get content's all about getting people in the door, getting people to your website, providing them that value helping them make an informed decision. And then throughout that content, guide them to different places on your site with the internal linking, which is another super important part of, of any content strategy campaign. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I just think it's about kind of the, the searcher's intent, but what we aim for is, is ranking more like content pages um, and then through internal linking, just helping kind of the user experience and get them. Get so them do you want to expand on internal linking? Like, what, 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 yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Explain what internal linking yeah, is. Yeah, so internal linking, um, essentially just guiding people to different parts of your website. So if you have a piece of content um, and it's talking about um, the, the best dog toys, um, you know, having, uh, well, I just, I just ruined that. But within <laughs> that content, so check out, check out these dog toys here. And then that link goes to your actual service services page. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, just getting people to the right places, but pointing people through throughout your website to different URLs, to different pieces of content or different service pages or whatever it is um, that makes sense within that content. I would say, in fact, that's probably one of the biggest things that I see people do wrong with blogs that, that are doing it themselves. I love yeah. that initiative. Anytime uh, a, a potential client comes to me and goes, oh, we're good. We're, we write our own content. I'm like, oh, perfect. You know, because a lot of people still aren't doing that. And then yeah. I'll take a look at their blogs and they've got this awesome piece of content with no links to their product page or, or the thing that they're talking about that they actually sell on their, yeah. on their, uh, on their site. And the, and at the end there's like no CTAs or, or call to actions. Yeah, that's right. going to be another really, really important part. And that's, you know, more of, of optimization, but making sure you have your blatant, clear calls to action on your pages, get the internal links in there, mm -hmm. and even external links. If you wanna refer to something, um, that's okay as well. That looks very natural. So it's not just internal, you have some external links and then you know your CTAs on the page as well. Yeah, just helps with conversion, obviously. Mm -hmm. Sure, mm -hmm. so Taylor, you, you, were, you, you mentioned a line, you know, some words, hey, for more information on this, go here. Is that better to do, or is it better to actually have that that link in a sense? If that makes sense, I mean, you know, with the, with um, text linking. Um, I guess I don't really understand. So, so you know, you're talking about okay, your best dog toys. Mm -hmm. uh, rather than find out more about best dog toys, you know, if you want to learn, link more about the best dog toys end of your link mm -hmm. you want to check out this other page or something like that and drew knows exactly what i'm what i'm asking yeah drew t take it away buddy i'm i'm a both kind of guy <laughs> you know capture as much as you can still get it you know so you know you, i would i would say try to have it there and then make sure you have that internal link there with like the click here or you know wherever wherever it's going but i would say both um, okay yeah yeah i i think making it you know it's almost like when we design and now i'm going to get a little bit off topic but this is exactly why we have dedicated 
uh, PPC landing pages and we don't send people back to the website because a lot of the times your website does not do a good job of capturing leads. So if you can do a blog with still have the, you know, give us your information, but then also have that go back to a product page because you don't know what, what the intent of the uh, person on your website is, right? They might just be perusing and come across your blog and then see that you have products and might go directly to your product page, or they might have a direct question and want to learn more. So they might fill out, you know, uh, give you their, their uh, email address or, or phone number or whatever, schedule consultation. So I think, I think both are going to be really, really important. Okay. Is it, um, is it okay to link to the same page multiple times on a, like, just assume a blog post. Mm -hmm. Um, so to go to the same link because Google's following the path. I see what you're saying. Yeah, no, I wouldn't have more than one link to a, a, a particular page within a within a, a, an anchor text. Like usually if you've got a 500 or a thousand word blog, you've got like two to three internal links and then one external link, right? Mm -hmm. So one's going to usually be to your homepage. One's going to be to like the contact us page. Where we're going to try to gather that information. And then one's like a product page. Sure. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you don't want to be spammy. I mean, this could go back to like the keyword stuffing too. In, in a sense, if you're hammering people to this one page on your site yeah, yeah. five times in one article, that's why would you be doing that's super <laughs> unnatural. Right. But I think it's just about it making sense as far as like the actual like best practice um, goes. You know, no, you don't want to do that. But if it makes sense within an article and it's a thousand words or more, and you happen to have to link to the same page. That's fine. I would just at that point, I would, you know, it's it's more about working with like your anchor text too. Um, yeah. But yeah, probably if there's not a need for that, then don't do it. Sure. You both mentioned the magic number one thousand. <laughs> um, what what? So talk, and that's obviously talking about a blog post. Well, it could be talking about a regular Any, yeah. content page too. Um, what is the the best practice on on page link? uh links yeah. now because it used to be like okay if you were doing three to five hundred words that was enough and if you went over 600 that was too many mm -hmm. but now but now with this magic number 1000 where do we where do we sit with that mm -hmm. it's a good question um and there's you know that is the million dollar question too right you know we've had we have people out there that like oh i write 1200 words and i won't go over or under and it's like i, I think that's a bit extreme right um, I would say, you know, our, a thousand is, is what we consider the minimum. Um, the more content, the better, you know, especially mm -hmm. if you have like a pillar piece of content, you know, 2000 word, 3000 word article. Um, but what I like to tell clients too, is what are you trying to rank for? Okay. Let's look at that keyword. Let's go to Google. Let's look at the first 10, uh, pages on Google and let's compare everyone's piece of content on there. If it's pillar pieces that are ranking, you know, two, 3000 word articles, then I'm going to tell you. Well, you know, it looks like Google really likes big, huge pieces of content because maybe the subject matter needs that. If sure. you're a plumber and everything's, you know, a thousand words, then do a thousand words of content um, or fifteen hundred or, or maybe just a little bit more. But, you know, I think five hundred and, and the reason it's probably shifted from three to five hundred isn't so much. Um, you know, Google is trying to mess with people to make them write more. I think it's just hard, right? right? It's like, ah, Google's Google's done it again, right? I did uh, my English teacher, and now they're making me do it more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I think they just realized it's really hard to get a point across in in that amount of words, right? So I think, um, you know, the longer, the longer the piece of content, the better opportunity you have to answer someone's search query. Exactly, yep. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, you said pillar. <laughs> Explain pillar content, why that's important, and what its purpose is. Yeah, well, usually, you know, pillar content or, um, oh gosh, there's another word for it, but basically it's just long form content, right? It's it's going to be your educational piece. Um, um, it, it could be on anything, really. I mean, you could write a, a, a pillar piece of content on, on, on any subject matter or product, or but it's going to be that probably that one thing on your website that you really want to drive traffic to or awareness about or um, is very complicated. So you need that. Um, so it's just, a, it's basically a blog post, but it's, it's very educational. It's long. It's going to have um, maybe some graphs in it, a lot more pictures, 
uh, maybe an ultimate guide attached to it. Um, okay. So it, it's it's really just that that one thing that maybe maybe your most competitive keyword. You know, maybe you, you do a, a, a pillar content on that. Um, Taylor, you want to add on to that? No, that's perfect. I was just, for example, like we have upwards of like 15 ultimate guides on our website and yeah. that's the thing that we are constantly sharing and that ranks really well too um, because, you know, it's, I don't know exactly the word count, but this is like 5,000 to 10,000 words where we're breaking mm. down every single piece of a successful SEO campaign or what's working in 2020 or what, what do you need to do for, for local SEO where we're guiding people, we're giving them all the information that they need. Yep. Um, and then that content, it's it's so helpful. They're sharing it too. They're posting mm -hmm. it elsewhere too on, on their social media, on other discussion boards. It's just about creating that content. Um, that's, you know, word count aside, it's just about the quality of yeah. the content and, and, and what you are providing, providing that value um, sure. that people obviously use as a resource. Yeah. I would say too, a part of pillar content is references, right? Like um, for us, we, we in our, our ultimate guides or our, our long uh, piece blogs, we'll, we'll reference Moz, Ahrefs, Simrush, um, Search Engine Journal. I mean, you name it, we'll link out to three or four, you know, just to support the facts that we're giving. Um, and I think that that, you know, as a business owner, sometimes people are so afraid to to link out to other, but it, it makes your, yourself look more authoritative, right? It's not just us saying this, it's three and four other different people that are saying this as well. Right. Um, so I think that's a big part of it as well. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about linking out to these other sites. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is just, I mean, one of those kinds of questions because you said, you mentioned that people are afraid to link out to those. Um, part of that's a psychological thing. It's like, I want to look like I'm the expert. Right. But do, do should people worry about link uh, sharing at that point? You know, it's like, okay, well, I'm linking to them, so they need to link back to me kind of thing. No, because I tell you what, the, and sorry to cut you off, the, the, yeah. more, the more that you do that, you'd be surprised. Guess what? Now Moz, Search Engine Journal, Ahrefs are going to refer back to the Hoth probably automatically or, or whoever is going to refer back to your business because you've, you've, you've you, especially if that piece is starting to rank, they're going to see that out there and other people are going to see that. So now you, you're becoming an authority too. So I think it goes both ways. You know, the more you, you link out, you'd be surprised about how many actual articles you'll get because people start reading them and then they want to reference your article. So yeah. I, I think that, you know, um, being feeling like you have to get a link back from somebody just because you link to them. Um, there's probably more goodwill than just, you know, doing it and, and, um, you know, you'd be surprised it'll, it'll naturally happen, but you still, I mean, if you have relationships within the industry though, um, and you think that you can, um, uh, take those to your advantage, then, you know, take advantage of those, but, sure. um, you don't have to do it to every article you do. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. It, it'll happen naturally. Like Drew mm -hmm. said, there's no harm in asking ever if, yeah. you know, if, if you have that open line of communication, shoot your shot and go for it. Um, but I wouldn't say to expect that every single time. Uh, it'll it'll happen naturally. Yeah, I yeah. wouldn't not write an article over that. So. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so sticking kind of with, with the, the pillar content, is it okay to have one of your product pages or one of your main internal pages uh, content pages be that pillar content or should it always be blog posts? Uh, you know, we, we, I didn't say I was going to ask you easy questions. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Um, to answer your question, I would say, and this is, this is the difficult part, right? Every, you know, if you told a business owner that has 30 different products or, or even 10 different products or a thousand, you know, they're going to tell you, Andrew, I'm, I can't write 3000 words for, for every single page on my website. And, and you don't have to naturally some products and some pages are just going to do better. Right. And if you see that and, or something's taken off, continue to add content to it. You know, um, if you look at all of our product pages, it's a lot of content on them, a lot of information. In fact, sometimes we, we get told, Hey, you guys got too much information on your website. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I would say mo for the most part, it's usually blogs, but there's every once in a while you might have two or two or three products that that you're just gonna 
put a lot of content on there and they're going to do really well. And again, I'd say it goes back to look what's ranking on the first page of Google. If for whatever product, for whatever reason, you know, uh, there's most of the products have a ton of content, then that's probably what you're going to want. You know, um, if you're selling nuts and bolts, which we've had clients that, that have had literally, they're like, Andrew, I need a product on a, you know, a, a three millimeter nut. And I'm like, dude, what, what, well, how many words can it's three millimeters and it, it screws on to stuff to keep it tight. You know, like, I don't, I don't know, but you know, so stuff like that, you're not, you're probably not going to have a bunch of content on, but if you're, you know, selling a service that's, you know, um, whatever, and it's, it's very detailed, then yeah, you're probably going to have a lot of content on that service or product page. So, yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, when I think of pillar content, I more so think of blog too. Um, just a longer form content that helps, the your audience make the informed decision that then goes to that product page um you know a product page sh shouldn't need a thousand words to to rank for for the one keyword you right. know that is that product um yeah. yeah i think more so long-form content should just stick to the blog um more so than anything so what i'm hearing regardless of the industry even if you sell just nuts and bolts you should have a blog on your site hundred percent. Absolutely. How, how often should that blog be updated? <laughs> Million dollar question again. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to what you were saying and just look and see what the rest of the industry is doing or no, I would push it a little bit. I, I wouldn't say that. I, I, I mean, I like to tell my clients, you know, two to four times a month minimum, right? That's bi-weekly or weekly. Um, okay. But there's industries out there that literally people are putting out a blog a day. Here's the problem with that. You're probably not doing enough link building to keep up with that blog a day, right? Um, so even with our company, I think we put out anywhere from three to five blog posts a month, uh, but they're going to be very, very informative. They're going to be more, you know, long, um, long tail. Um, so I, I would say I still stick with my two to four because yeah. that works for most yeah. people. Um, and you're not losing your audience at that point. I know for me personally, I know we're doing this for Google, but a lot of people still share these across either LinkedIn, uh, their email marketing campaigns, Facebook. If you're spamming me with a blog a day, I can guarantee you I'm not reading every single one. And then I might just stop reading them all together. Right. Yeah. So, but if you're putting out informative content and you're actually helping me make a decision and it's two to four times, you know, a month, I'm much more inclined to check it out, give it a legitimate read through, take your company more seriously. Um, and again, it's easier to keep up with link building that way. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Quality over quantity for sure. There's not a certain number. I mean, we say the more content, the better, but you know, if you're, if you're just doing it and you're putting out content and it's, it's not good and nobody even was asking for it and it doesn't answer, it doesn't help your audience, then don't do it just to say that you've, written five blogs in one month. Um, obviously, monthly blogging is important. Uh, kind of the number that I recommend to is, is about two to four a month, um, but more so just about the, the, the quality, I think. Gotcha, yep. makes perfect sense. So Google is always, well, talking Google generically, almost like Kleenex, you know, the search engines um, want to see new content. Now, if you've got a, a main blog page, you know, that's got that's got your 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 library of posts. Should you also put on your home page, um, you know, those feeds also? It's like, okay, here are my last three blog posts. They're basically the same link. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I think that starts getting into your UX UI, right? I don't, I don't think so much. It's, it's, um, is my homepage going to rank better because I linked to, I've got three featured blogs on it, and then I also have my blog page. I think it's more of a, you know, is my, am I capturing that audience to go to my blog? Um, I've seen it done both ways. I've seen sites sure. rank well both ways. So I For think sure. stuff like that, you, you, you probably start getting into the UX UI and what's, what's appealing to your audience. So right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I mean, if it makes sense, if it, if it looks good, if you have like a blog that performs super well, or you, you know, you have a guide that everybody's looking for, um, you know, you could, you could definitely promote that on the homepage. 
Uh, otherwise, that that content will rank, you know, separately, and, and people will find that content just for that specific blog post too. So, you you could, but yeah, like Andrew said, more of a user experience. Sure. Yeah, and I I think for myself, you know, working with clients that I've worked with for so many years, they all stress so much over, well, I need my homepage to rank, <laughs> and the truth is. I don't even care if people go to my homepage. My, yeah. my, homepage, my homepage is like, there's really nothing on it that's important other than links to the pages I actually want you to go to. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think um, I think people stress too much over the wrong thing. Yeah, yeah. I think homepages are really just turning into the new about us page, right? It's like your brand, a little bit of information about you, what your, your company motto is like, um, and then, you know, maybe, a couple features here like your top services or maybe some of the some of the blogs and things like that but usually i think even clayton um our cmo he actually did a study on you know less is more when it comes to the home page you know you get more conversions that way you get more people you know traversing your website looking at other parts of it um so it, it's interesting you know always a b always be a b testing your website um and i would encourage people to try a, a less is more approach on their home page sure. Um, and, and see if it, see if it, you know, gets a better, your less bounce rate or, or whatever. So does it help with, does it help with ranking to, to have people start going through your site rather than just hanging out on one page? Mm -hmm. I think so. Okay. Yeah. 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 The, the depth of a website is a ranking factor alone too. So the more places you can point people, the longer, the longer you can keep somebody on your website, Google can see that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that just shows that, you know, you're, you're a resource and, and you're providing value to this client. You are, you know, and I don't know, you want to be the industry leader. You want to keep people on your site. So obviously, um, yeah, the, the depth of a website is definitely a ranking factor. Makes, makes total sense. Um, what about, what about blog posts? Okay. So you've got a site, let's say, um, I use roofing all the time yeah. though. My dad passed away. I, been working on a roofing website for like 20 years, you know, cause he was one of my first clients and I just learned new stuff building out through him. So you've got a site that does roofing. Mm -hmm. We can get a little more specific and say tile roofing. What if, what if you have a blog, you know, general blog page with your post? Um, how do you, is it okay to have blog posts with the same keyword? or should that keyword never be duplicated throughout the site so so yeah so okay i i wrote a blog post not me personally but i wrote a blog post and my keyword is tile roofing mm -hmm. and over here there's another blog post and really it's just about tile roofing and well here's a third one and it's just about tile roofing is that okay or is that frowned upon by the big g or what what do you think this kind of goes into the whole keyword cannibalization thing. Um, the thing is, is you're naturally going to be talking about the same thing on your website in multiple places. Obviously, you don't want to optimize two pages for the exact same keyword um, and, and have content on those pages that, that accomplish the exact same thing um, because that's when the pages will start to compete with each other. But if you're if you're mentioning and using this keyword on other pages, that just, that just makes sense. Google's not going to penalize you for that. Um, it, that that will happen naturally uh, but i guess that kind of comes back to the you know more of the on page aspects like the metadata you've got to make sure that your title and your meta description is optimized correctly for that specific keyword um but it's okay if you are if you have another page that's kind of talking about something you know that that includes that as well yeah and and to expand on that you know um i always say typically whatever page is ranking, that's where you're going to be, you know, building the links to. So if it is a product page and you've written a blog, we're not going to be sending a bunch of links probably to that blog page for maybe tile roofing. We're just helping it support, you know, your tile roofing page. Um, and usually that blog is going to be some like long tail variation of tile roofing, right? Maybe tile roofing companies, maybe um, when to consider, you know, tile roofing uh, replacement or something like tile roofing replacement. So it's going to be something usually long tail, and then um, which is going to help obviously the, the the keyword tile roofing. But if if the if whatever page is is doing well for that keyword, 
that's the one that we're going to look at pointing the links back to for that particular keyword. So perfect. Inter yeah. Internal linking will come in. Yeah. Perfect. You've both mentioned long tail. Mm -hmm. um, let's get a little explanation on what that is, you know, because I mean, we know what it is, but somebody might not. Yeah. So every keyword has what's called a parent topic, which is the, the main, uh, the main topic of the keyword. So like, um, attorney is a great example. Then you've got, um, you know, uh, DUI attorney, immigration attorney, um, you know, you've got all these different variations of attorney or attorneys near me. So attorney might be the parent topic, but then a long tail is just basically expanding upon that keyword. And it could be, you know, two keywords put together. It could be up to four or five, you know what I mean? Um, just depends on, on, on what it is, but, um, yeah, every keyword is going to have a parent topic and then you're going to have a bunch of subsets and which is why that's important is every single keyword has a search volume and a keyword difficulty score associated with it. So a lot of the times when we're trying to rank for something, that parent topic is usually the most competitive, has the highest search volume. So then what we start to look at when we're doing our keyword research is, okay, what are the variations of that keyword? How far down can we go to where we think we can start to rank for it? It still has search volume and I'm still going to get, um, search intent traffic to my website that I can convert, right? Cause you don't want to get something too long tail. That's like 10 searches a month. And out of those 10, maybe two people might be, you know, looking to purchase. But if you can get something in that hundred to 500 range on a, okay. on a, on a keyword, that's got a, a 5,000 search volume, you know, then that's, that's kind of your, your honey hole there. And if you can rank, start to rank for 20 and 30, um, long tail variations, now you've pretty much equaled that parent topic. So mm -hmm. it's probably, I probably went into like a, a long, it's still a little confusing the way I explained it, but, um, but yeah, that's why long tails are, are very important because you can capture a lot of potential, um, traffic that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's how we always start off our strategies too, is going after the long tail. Um, cause like Drew said, the parent topics, they're always going to be the most competitive. Uh, and if you just dive right in and try to, to focus on those and go after those up against whales that already dominate, I mean, you're going to be spending a lot of money. Um, so to see more, you know, immediate results and see more traction going after those variations of that root keyword is going to be, that's just the way to go. Wait a um, minute. You said that they were going to be spending a lot of money. Yeah. Oh, well then let's switch our strategy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, no, then, no, no, no. You have all of these once you're ranking for all of these different variations it's going to be a lot easier to go after that root keyword and that's that really competitive keyword um once you have the, the content to support it too yeah no that makes perfect perfect sense um you said something taylor like what did you just say you said something oh, about <laughs> no, we, and we froze for a second too so i was trying to pay attention to that to make sure we didn't need to refresh something. And um, ah, I'll think I'll, I'll come back to that if I can remember what it was. Um, so, oh, this, okay. I know what it was. So you're talking about, about periods of time kind of how long should, how long should it take for SEO to actually mm. work? Because we all get clients to go, well, I started doing SEO last week and my page is still not ranking on page one. What's going on? How long should it take before a page ranks? Well, it's another million dollar question. There's, I mean, the thing about SEO is nothing is an exact science. So obviously, I mean, it's a fact that links, it can take Google eight weeks until it indexes and crawls a new link. Um, so that's why SEO, it's obviously a long-term, a long-term game. We usually say on our campaigns, you know, around month four, month five is, is really when we should start seeing like the, the traffic increase and, and everything get indexed. Um, but there's some sites that don't see it. It depends. There's so many factors that go into it. Um, so it, it's hard to say, but as far as like link building, how long that can take to impact your rankings. You know, it could be eight weeks, it could be 90 days, it could be a year. Um, it's, I don't know. Yeah, there's there's so many factors. I mean, also, where is your website starting, right? Are you bringing me a brand new site that is still what we would call the, the Google sandbox? By the way, do yourself a favor 
go to Google and type in Google Sandbox and search it. You'll 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 know what I'm talking about. But uh, <laughs> it, it's it's probably the most frustrating thing um, for new sites because they're already trying to rank, and then you know Google's got this sandbox period where they're like, are, is this legit? Or you know we got to look at the website, and and people say that could be anywhere from three months to a year for mm -hmm. the sandbox. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And then if you've got if you've got a website that's already existing and you're ranking well, well, they, it could be you know four to six weeks. Just depends on you know how long it takes Google to crawl and index those links. Um, sure. So I always I always like Taylor say I always tell people about three to four months. But the nice thing is once we do the link building after month three or four, we should see consistent results as long as you're consistently building links. Because now month four, you're seeing month one's results. Month five, you're seeing month two's results. Month six. So it's it's a little bit of a, a startup kind of headache, you know, where we're waiting and waiting and waiting. Uh, but once we consistently do it, the, like the gratification is is there. And it's like, you know, my personal trainer tells me the same thing. I got the same question. Hey, I've, I've worked out for six or 30 days now. Why haven't I lost any weight? They're like, Andrew. Come on, you know, it's like do do this for a year and you'll 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 look better. You might even look like Taylor. I'll be like, oh, perfect. Just, uh, <laughs> I get the same I get the same frustrations when it comes to you know trying to work out. But you know SEO is a lot a lot like the same way. You go to the gym once and you expect to be like Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's just not going to happen. You for know sure. if you build you build links for one month, well then you just wasted money. Um, and and that's what I always tell people too. They're like, well, I I just don't have the budget, and I'm like then do PPC and it's probably going to get us that transition. But seriously, do something that that's going to, um, you know, make your money work and, 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 you know, get some sort of capital gains in return. Because if you don't have a, a I'd say, honestly, I, I would say three months, but realistically a six month to a year commitment for SEO, sometimes it's just not worth it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and some people, you know, they don't like that answer and, uh, they don't like the unknown, but that's just yeah. the truth. Um, and, you know, if you can find an SEO agency that says, we'll have you in this position by this date. Run. Don't run. work with me. Yeah. Don't work with just in, it's, it's impossible to predict SEO. If yeah. anybody, you know, if I'm talking to clients that, that can't get behind that, that's it's not a good fit. And that's when I transitioned to, to the PPC conversation where they if they need the metrics um, mm -hmm. and they need these conversion rates, those types of KPIs, much better for, fit for PPC. Yeah. Um, you know, well, SEO is a long-term. And the funny thing, you know, SEO, I always tell people, because a lot of local businesses is what we work with. I mean, we work with e-commerce sure. e as well, but I always I always bring up this when people are like, well, what do you mean? I got to do this for a year. And I'm like, well, you've got a brick and mortar location, don't you? And they're like, well, yeah. I'm like, well, do you market that location? Whether did you join Rotary? Are you part of the Chamber of Commerce? Are you, you know, doing local events in your community? And they're like, well, yeah. And I'm like, so were you in Rotary for three months? Were you in the Chamber of Commerce for for a year? You know, they're like, no, no, we we still we still do that. And and SEO is like that. It's it's your website is literally your online brick and mortar. So there is no you would never stop marketing for your own business. Why would you stop marketing for your website? Right. Yeah. I mean, it's so important. So I think people get frustrated when we say you got to do this for three months. But realistically, you should be doing this forever. And that's sure. how you're going to dominate your industry because, the you know, everybody's got the same. Your competitors, I guarantee you, have the same mindset you do. Mm -hmm. So if you do this for a year, like years on end, you're going to be way ahead of your competition. Way Absolutely. Ahead. Yep. Now I've got a tagline that I work with every now and then, you know, it says, if you ignore your, um, if you know, your something like if you ignore your online marketing, that's kind of like having a store and never advertising. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, well, and, and today in today's world, if you're not, if you're not doing SEO and, and various different types of digital marketing, dude, you're not going to be found. You're yeah. buried and your competitors are doing something. Mm -hmm. so you have a web. The only reason something. you have a website is when you pass out a business card, people are going to go to it. Like, like that, that, that might as well be the only reason you have one if you're not doing SEO. Just yeah, you know. exactly. Back to like the is SEO dead thing. Be my right. guess, and, and you can believe that you can you can not do anything with your website. I'd be very interested to see how that works out for you, because all of your competitors are doing SEO. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. You you both brought up uh, pay per click or you alluded to it at least Taylor. You know you didn't say it outright like Drew did, but you've mentioned it. <laughs> you know, and um, 
you know, I, I've told people it's like the same thing. If somebody says they guarantee you'll be on page one through SEO, run for sure. Because nobody can guarantee it because as we started the whole conversation, Google, the one that really counts, changes things almost every other day. Yeah. The rules are constantly shifting and changing. Um, I can guarantee somebody gets on page one today within an hour. Yeah. But that's through, but that's through pay-per-click. So um which is a, which is a better value? I Good. know that I know that's a tough question because it's you know I mean it depends right right. But for for ranking and for getting traffic, which is a better value for a new client and versus somebody who's been around for a little while? It's a good Thought? question. Um, I'll, I'll kind of start off with this. You know, I'd say for a new for a new business. Um, building that, using SEO to build the authority for your brand is going to be the most important part, right? Don't worry about your keywords. First, get your brand name out there. Because if you're telling people about, you know, Andrew's Roofing Company and they type in Andrew's Roofing Company and your website doesn't even come up, forget your keywords, right? Like worry about your brand and then use PPC to start, you know, bringing in that traffic. Um, and eventually you'll, you'll, you'll going to a landing page, not going yeah, to your home. Exactly. Exactly. And eventually you'll see a switch, right? Where you're going to start using PPC to maybe supplement some of your marketing and then start doing SEO. And then that might bring down some of your PPC, but you should always be doing both is, is an answer. I mean, you should there should never be an all in basket of SEO or an all in basket of PPC. Um, you know, and, and, and this gets into SEM and PPC where it's like email marketing, uh, content marketing, SEO, um, uh, PPC. I mean, literally it's digital marketing. You should be doing a little bit of everything, but, but PPC is very, is a very important part of that strategy and probably pretty important for any new business getting started uh, because, you know, you're not going to rank overnight. So you're going to need something to supplement that income, whether it's an awesome email marketing campaign or it's, you know, a uh, paid advertisement either through Facebook or Google or, you know, all the other different platforms you can advertise. Yeah, right, right. Jesus. The million that there are. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, ideally you can do both. Um, but I think it really depends on obviously the type of business that you have and what yeah. your goals are. Uh, like I said, when I have conversations with people, I can tell, usually I ask what their goals are, but I can tell too with how they speak about what they want, um, whether to point them towards PPC or uh, SEO, but it's not, there's not like a, one is better than the other. They're both great. Um, it, and you should be doing both. Um, but yeah. Yeah. And that's what I tell people too, is, you know, I mean, one, depending on where you are, what stage you're in, one might have more value in the moment, but they should, you should be doing both of them simultaneously to some degree or another. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I looked at the time. I know we started a little bit late. I know you guys have other stuff to do as well. So kind of wrap things up a little bit. Um, what what would you suggest somebody do to just get started in, in SEO? Um, like if they were assuming a new company, you know, what are a couple of two or three quick tips that they could do? Yeah, um, I would say definitely research should be step number one. Um, you, there's a lot of free tools out there that, that you can use to, you know, don't don't only check out your website where your website stands, but plug in your competition to see what they're ranking for. Um, I mean, research that kind of like overwhelms people sometimes. But like Drew said earlier, it can literally be as easy as just typing in a few keywords and seeing what content ranks and what shows up and then just diving in, taking a look at that competitor, too. Um, a, a really good tool for content uh, is answer the public. That's one that we use a lot too. Um, Uber suggests one of my favorite sites. Yeah. Yeah. There's just, there's a ton of free tools out there that are really great. You can gather a ton of information. Um, I, I would say that should be step number one. And then whether or not you're a professional, uh, you know, seek, seek professional help and make sure that you are finding a good partner um, mm -hmm. right off the bat. There's a lot of companies, spammy SEOs out there that'll lock you into a contract and they don't have any reporting and you don't know what's what's getting done. I have way too many conversations with people that have been burned by SEOs in the past. Um, yeah. And that sucks because it's already, you know, sometimes it's already hard to get people on board for SEO or mm -hmm. truly believe in it. 
So I would say uh, do that research and then whether or not you feel comfortable producing the content and or trying to attempt link building or not, um, seek, seek professional help. <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> it's it's so bad. Holy, holy cow. She, <laughs> she just made everybody on this call go to rehab. <laughs> Well, yeah. we're under COVID stuff, so, yeah. you know. Yeah. Just get it. <laughs> oh, that's classic. But seriously, I mean, there's people that spend a lot of time and resources trying it themselves. Yeah. And, um, I mean, you know, it's SEOs, it's not easy. It, it's not an easy thing to do. So, yeah, I, I would say anything free, first of all. So, like, the research you can do is free, right? There's a lot of awesome tools out there. Um, and then content. Try try doing some content yourself. You know, it's not, it's, that is one thing that you can do that's free. You just have to take the time. And I know time is money. So some people might say, well, Andrew, my time's worth, no, it's not. <laughs> Sit down and, and write it, try to write a thousand word article um, and, and research, you know, best practices, uh, put a piece of content up there and then uh, get in contact with somebody that can help with link building. Um, and also try to leverage your relationships. You know, if you are a part of the Chamber of Commerce, try to get a link back. If you are a part of your mm -hmm. local road, you know, these are things um, or, or business relationships that you have. And, and these are things that you can you can easily leverage and do yourself. Um, but, you know, the research, the content. Uh, and then from there, I would try to find somebody reputable that can either consult you or, yeah. or do it for you. Sure. So and, and I know people freak out with content creation. Yeah. My, tip, my tip always to everybody, whether you use video or not, do video, mm -hmm. talk your content out because you can have that conversation and then go and get it transcribed. I mean, you got, yeah, different, there are different transcription tools you can do and, and um, you can read through whatever that content is and fix it and edit it, whatever. I mean, Grammarly is great for something like that. Mm -hmm. But you can, you've got three pieces of content immediately. You've got video, you've got audio, and you've got text once that's transcribed. So when people when people hear about creating text or writing out these big articles, you don't need to. Um, I did, you just shoot the video. I did a, a conversation a couple of weeks ago with Greg Rollette, and I've got my team transcribing it. Um, I stuck it into Word or Grammarly. I don't remember one, but our hour conversation was over 11,000 words. <laughs> okay. In an hour, you talk for 10 minutes and you're going to come up with your thousand words worth of content. Mm -hmm. um, we've been on here live for almost an hour. I can promise you we're over 10,000 words. Yeah. So for people struggling with, oh my God, I hate writing or whatever. Don't stress over it. Shoot a video, um, and 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 pull out the text from that. So, yep. mm -hmm. cool. yeah, that's a good piece of advice. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Drew Taylor, I appreciate you guys so much coming on and, and hanging out for a little bit, even though it was my fault. Coming <laughs> in. Oh, stop it! I'll, I will own it. I think you guys screwed up. <laughs> Yeah, you can't trust those hop guys. I'm telling you. Nah, I, was like, I think we told him that we're Eastern time, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> we, yeah. I was well, like, Brian, you know damn well I, I live in Florida. <laughs> I know I know exactly where you are. And the, and the funny thing, and it's not an excuse, it's just what it is. I had just gotten done with a phone call like 20 minutes ago, 20 minutes before we started in Washington. You know, so I don't know where which my is also on the East Coast, right? DC, not the state, right? There's only one, there's only one Washington. Don't get that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the other That's one, awesome. The other one is Southern Maryland. That's right. <laughs> or, or Northern Virginia. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, but, yeah, thanks for thanks for having us. It was fun. It was sure. fun. And, yeah. 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 And I think we should do this again. There were a lot of things in there that we touched on that could definitely be expanded yeah. on. Um, mm -hmm. We could go on forever. Yeah, but you know, our chunks are about as much as we have time for. Yep. <laughs> so, awesome. all right, guys. Well, I really appreciate it. I'll let you all go. And um, if anybody has any questions, hey, just drop them in the chat. We'll get to those and answer them uh, as they come along. So perfect. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Guys. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Bye, Brian. Bye, Taylor. Bye. See you. See Take ya. care. Thank you.